Alright, yeah, welcome back to the third and final episode for our Wizards Tribal deck. Let's not waste any time, shall we? Let's get into the game. See you in a sec. Alright, uh, let's see. Yeah, we can take this. Skewed a little bit too much into the wire. I'd prefer that to be an island, but sure. Let's just lead off with the planes, I suppose. No reason not to. Our opponent is rank 4, Brit 2326. It's annoying. Because I'm rank 16 at the moment. It's still not uh, matchmaking me with people roughly around my rank at the moment. Seems the moment you hit rank 30, it starts doing it. But until then, it just gives you random people. But oh well. Down at the lower ranks, you get some more interesting decks to look at, which always intrigues me. Though... <laughs> Our opponents on 66 cards so I can imagine they are not too familiar with the game or at least don't care to get to a uh, professional standard more for fun really right we've missed our land drop so I think I'm gonna loot with Jace not sure what I'm gonna drop yet it's black white and there's a land uh, let us drop We'll keep the Royal Spout to annoy our opponent. I think we'll drop a Sceptre's Void Mage. Play the Fortress and pass the turn. That way we can leave up counter spells. We can bounce things back on top of his library to slow him down. So we'll see. So he's hit his third land, his first mana. What's he going to do? Angelic Purge. Yeah, we're not going to let you do that but thanks for sacking a land in order to do it. Appreciate that. Ha! <laughs> oh, dear. Well, depending on how well our AI friend over here performs, we might just skip this one, but... Yeah, just get rid of the 1-1 one, one token. He gets to scry two, we declaration in stone. Or angelic purge. Angelic purge is probably better. Kill that. Yep. Get rid of the planes. Flips all of our wizards. Excuse me. Oh no, we don't have three wizards anymore. Silly me. Silly, silly me. We could still Declaration in Stone, though. It's Declaration in Stone. This no, I've done it again. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Oh, no. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Should have done the planes. But we're fine. <laughs> oh, dear. There we go. And we win. Well, that was long and drawn out. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next game. All right, we're in. Um, yeah, why not? Got plenty of removal. Yeah, we're going for another match. I uh, did just play another one, and then the Angelic purged the, uh, one of their three lands away and then left. I did continue playing it, and we won, but... I felt it's probably a bit of a bad idea just to publish a game against an AI with a low level deck. So we're going to have another one. Alright, red green. We're just going to keep on the blue mana. Hopefully we don't get flooded. It's looking like what's going to happen. Our opponent is rank 13 called El Cid Camperor. Goblin Glory Chaser. Alright. Some sort of aggro build. I'm not sure what the green's here for. Probably four werewolves. I'd like to imagine. Well, we're just going to play another island. And hold up some counter spells and this such. So he's going to be able to get him with this one. Which I'm fine with. And it will become a 2-2 menace once it gets its renown trigger. Titan Strength. Something like that. Some sort of pump spell. 
Joker has decided against it. That'll also do, I suppose. Hmm. Makes me wonder. Well, there's another count spell. Let's just continue to pass the turn over. I'm not going to Royal Spout it away because he will just be able to play it back in the same turn with very little uh, downside. I'd prefer to Royal Spout something away that it took an entire turn to cast. So we'll just continue playing our lands. The further we get down into mana count, the more powerful we become. Alright, another one. Well, he is hoping for a Declaration in Stone. That would be quite nice. And it's not. It's a Void Mage. Void Mage is alright. What it does is allows us to bounce his 2-2, which makes the 1-1 difficult to get through. And then it's going to force either a Burn Spell or some sort of Creature Pump, which is another card out of his hand. Which we won't be bothered about countering so yeah let's do that hopefully this works out the way that I see it doing it he could also end step burners and then get through but yet again we want all the removal out of his hand by the time we've got the docent of protection in our hand ready to cast because we are on curve to do it now so he's at four mana yeah that's fine I'm gonna block it uh, I honestly don't care if you play a pump spell Wild size. Okay. Comes at 3 3 with trample. So he does get his renowned trigger anyway. And he gets a card draw off of that. I'm going to play his other one. Yep, there it is. Cool. So we're down to 16. Spell shrivel. Well, we've got a lot of count spells. So we might as well hold them up, it's the only strength that we do have. But he's got a clock on us right now, so... We're not going to get out of this without some sort of answer pretty soon. Hopefully my lack of playing anything means that he'll over overextend and then we'll draw into something like a planar outburst and blow away the entire board. That's the hope. He's going to get into three here minimum. Might even have a creature uh, pump spell. So it looks like he's been saving them for when we block. So I doubt he's going to use them until the end when they threaten to kill us, which is the correct play. Seed Guardian. When it dies, put an XX elemental token where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. He has none. Um, but it is a 3-4 with reach, so it's quite a dangerous little creature. Well, broken concentration it. It's not allowing him to develop his board any further. And then he's just going to play a Timber Gorge and pass. We get a land. Which means we can Angelic Purge and still hold up a counter. I think that's what we'll do. Yep, tap all our white down. Sack a white source. Kill one of his creatures. So we're only taking two a turn now, and we still have the counter spell open. Spell Shrivel is very useful at the moment, but it's going to become less useful as time continues. Okay, Thopter Foundry. You can activate that right now if he chooses to do so. Thopter Engineer. Yeah, that's going to get out of hand if we don't get rid of it. Because he's going to be able to sack that, make some hasty creatures, and then all of his Thopters are just going to get in without much time for us to deal with it. A infectious blood loss. Oh, if you do that, I'm going to royal spite you. You glory chaser. So there's that. You could do that. At least we now know there's an infectious blood loss in his hand. That's one of his cards. Not going to play it at all. He's probably going to wait until he's convinced we don't have an answer for it. Alright. Well, I'm going to pass the turn again. We are up to 6 mana now, so we can awaken the Royal Spout and get something down to start blocking damage. Okay. 
want to see that infectious bloodlust come down. I want to see it soon. Oh my god, we're just hitting mana after mana after mana. Right, well, in that case, awaken, bounce that back to your hand. We're going to make one of our blue sources a 4-4. Four, four. Screws up his draw for the next turn. Might as well actually know. If he glory chases and infectious blood lusts, then he gets to haste it out as a three, which then becomes a four, which trades with our island. Hmm. Yeah, we're gonna hold back. It's probably a bit too cautious. The sack is stopped to foundry. Yep, it's gonna get two one ones. They're actually going to get one of the infectious bloodlusts, aren't they? So that was a misplay on my part. And this is Judgment. Support two. And then they all fight me. Oh, yeah. So we've lost our island. We're just getting dominated here. Absolutely dominated. Ugh. Come on, planar outburst. And I think we pretty much just lose now. Glory Chaser comes down with a bloodlust. We counter the bloodlust. We can awaken with the scatter to the winds, which is likely what we have to do, but these are just going to kill us. Oops. Gonna threaten him with that. That's what we want to counter. Counter that instead. And then make a planes. We have a blocker now for the ground. And he has another one. And that's gonna be the game. Alright. Well that sucks. GG. I'll see you in the next game, guys. Alright, we're on the draw. Um, yeah, this is a keeper. We've got turn two telling time, turn three we can hope hold up counter spells. We've got planeswalker removal, we've got our end game card in hand. So I think we're alright. We're against red, so this actually might be too slow. What do we draw? Reflector Mage, it may no longer be too slow. Oh okay, yeah, our opponent is rank 10 called Dane the Dane. He has the correct amount of cards. So we're, uh, we've got ourselves a worthy opponent. Oh. There we are. Game cut out for a second there. Let's just keep on the blue mana. No reason to play out our white just yet. We'll telling time on his end step. Threaten creature counters. Oh, the game is being a bit laggy today. Well, he's mono red and he hasn't played down a creature yet. Oh, he's red black. Is it vampires then? Even so, this is still a really slow build up for vampire decks, which we can punish. Alright, uh, we'll take the counter. We'll take the other blue mana. So, looks like we're on curve to. Hit our docent on time. We're just going to hold up our counters again. We could imprison in the moon his black mana, but if he plays a swamp, then it's just wasted. What the hell? Elemental Rotted Hulk. I have never seen anyone play that in my entire life. Yeah, you can, you can have that. That's fine. We can reflect a mage that away, I suppose. Not that I really care. I think I'll just let him continue to hit me with it. Play out Prairie Stream. Pass the turn. 
This can't be vampires then, unless he just literally didn't have a card to fill the last spot of his vampire deck. Which I find amusing. The game's been really strange today. Weirdly laggy at times. Gotta be aware it might screw me over. Alright, well let him hit us for two. If he does nothing, we might flash out the Harbinger just to get some little bit of damage in. Uh, actually, nah. Let's not bother. Disciple of the Ring. Oh, dear. Our opponent's in for a little bit of trouble. Uh, we haven't played out a creature, so he's had no reason to try any uh, creature removal on us. We could tempt him with some. If we Harbinger, we get to hold up counter spells, and we get to bounce his creature back. So let's try that out. We'll see if he has any removal by baiting him with this. This being the first creature we play, might be tempted to get rid of it, thinking it's our only one. It's another Rogue's Passage. Okay. They're Origin Uncommon, so this guy's not playing on uh, budget decks. Or at least not totally. Oh my god, what's this? It's plus one, plus one, as long as you control a mountain. Uh, four, three. Now nah, we'll just reflect a mage it. Hopefully we hit a land and then we get to hold up our counters again. Also, it progresses us towards our end goal. Or a declaration in stone. Hmm. Still need one more mana before I'm comfortable putting the disciple out, because then we can counter non creature spells. Pretty easy. Um. Do we want to reflect a mage it? Yeah, we've got removal for anything he plays if this turns out to be a bad play. So, we'll stop him from playing that. We'd likely see that elemental come down in its place anyway. I'd imagine. Let's get him for two. Let's make some effort to defeat our opponent. And then pass the turn over. So, it's either that elemental or it's a new threat. And if it's threatening enough, we have removal for it. Just hoping we hit a land, and if we do, then we can hold up Disciple. Reeve Soul. Alright, that's fine. There's the removal we were worried about, and there's some more of it. Sweet. Fantastic. Alright, and that's just a counter spell. No point putting the docent out because it won't be flipping anytime soon. Actually, you know what? He has already played out one of his firecrafts. His removal seems to be for smaller creatures. Yeah, let's do it. It's five damage per turn. We likely see him put out one of his big crappy creatures. And if not, we have Disciple. Disciple can do some work. Yep, Nightfire Giant. Which means Dawson's going to stay down and we'll hold up counter spells for the rest of the game. To keep it alive. You can do that for the next three turns. So, And there's our mana. Uh, let's not push it, I don't think. Because if we play the Disciple holding up our counter here counter unless he pays two. What kind of removal? It could be a murder for three and he'd be able to pay. Uh, it could be a firecraft and we wouldn't be able to counter it, actually. So there is that. Didn't consider that side of it. Thank you. So that was a bit of an oversight on my part, actually. But is a uh, one in 
slightly over 46 chance of him having that card or drawing into it in the next turn. So I think we can still perform a racing scenario. We've just got two creatures and an instant in there, haven't we? Yeah. So I'd like some more instants in the graveyard for the disciple to use. That would be nice. At the rate that we're going now, we are going to win this race. We can even at any point declaration in stone the Nightfire Giant and then absolutely win it. We have to worry about burn spells though. So at, at some point during this little racing back and forth, eh, you can have that. That's fine. Yeah, at some point we are going to have to remove this just to potentially get rid of any uh, burn scenarios that might occur. A meandering river, which is nice. It's getting for five again. I think maybe we do declaration in stone this nightfire giant. Just so that we're doing five a turn and he's doing two. And we can still hold up a counter spell. Because Disciple of the Ring doesn't block very well. We can use it to tap something down for a turn, but it feels like a bit of a waste of our instant. And the Declaration gets another one into our graveyard as well. And we get a 1-1. One, one. Which gets us towards our flying over the top and beating the ass of our opponent. I'm inclined just to counter the next thing that he plays as long as it's something worth countering. He's hit all three of his rogue's passages. A reeve soul. Not gonna reeve soul a 1 1. Oh, yeah. Because I'll, I'll be honest, I was kind of tempted to counter it just so that I get another 1 1. Traitorous instinct. Yeah, you're not, you're not doing that. That's not happening. We get a 1 1. He can reeve soul away a token if he wants now. But he can't touch our docent. We get a Gurmag Swiftwing. One, two, first strike, flying. Haste. Alright, we'll take it. Hello, there we go. If we hit an instant we can cast, then we win. Otherwise he's on one life. So, moment of truth, do we hit an instant? We do, there we go. Right, roll spout. Away, he's Gurmag Swiftwing. We get another wizard, we flip our wizards, and we go in for the kill, holding up a counter spell. Fairly dominating match that time. Fantastic. Boosh. Really do enjoy this deck, it's a lot of fun. Alright guys, that's going to do it for today. Don't forget, if you want a subscriber deck submitted for yourself, be sure to leave it down in the comment section below. Send it by email or send me it on Twitter. Whichever one is fine with you is fine with me. If you've enjoyed the content, then be sure to leave a like. If you've loved the content, then be sure to subscribe. But if you're not quite sure, stay for the end card to the rest of the content we've got to offer. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.